That's my best friend. That's my best friend. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Dave Mo, Dave Mo Flips. You already know what it is. Man, listen, I'm on my way to work again. So, I was watching a video this morning from a YouTube video from another uh, YouTuber, obviously YouTube video from a YouTuber, car dealer, whatever, right? I really, really kind of don't like this dude, so I'm probably going to put him on blast in a video. But he made a comment that really, 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 like, I don't want to say got me mad, but got me under, in my feelings. Put so got under, under my skin, and it normally doesn't really happen like that to me. But I made this channel that you're watching right now to, uh, you know, to help us, right? To, to, to help us as, as a community grow. White, black, Spanish, other, it doesn't fucking matter. This is more along the lines of just helping people make money. We're not even talking about wealth. Fuck, we're not even talking about being, like, wealthy, rich, nothing. We're simply sitting here talking about making money. All right, we haven't even scratched the surface of being rich, let alone given thought to what it's like to be wealthy. All right, so with that being said, the uh, the guy made a comment and he was like, you know, oh, the, I bought this truck and the person who's gonna buy this truck is the same person who's going out and can't pay their bills but is taking their stimulus money and buying Jordans. I took that offensive because that used to be me. I had no education when it came to money. I made money and I spent money. I mean, I always pay my bills. I mean, I made money and I spent money. I never invested in nothing. nothing. It, it, shit didn't matter to me. I lived for the moment. You understand what I'm saying to you? A lot of us, whether we're doing it legally or illegally, we make that money and we spend it. We make it, we spend it. We make it, we spend it. I'm addicted now and I'm blessed to have a career. Okay, but I'm also addicted to going to work to put in time to get a paycheck instead of being a full-blown entrepreneur where I make my own money. So people love to say, "Oh, you can't put a dollar on me. You, I'm I'm priceless." Bullshit. If you work a job like I do, someone somewhere put a dollar amount on your life. They said. Per hour, this is what you're worth, and I'm going to buy a block of 40. I'm going to buy 40 hours from your life per week. You do the math on that, okay? You do the math. You were selling yourself to someone for X amount of dollars for 40 hours a week, 32 hours a week, whatever amount of time you were working for someone else and not doing your own thing, myself included. So here's what I'm gonna tell you guys. That stimmy money just dropped three days ago. Four days ago. Wednesday, it's Monday. Do the math, man. Five days ago. All right? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to give thought to this. Whatever it is, let's stick to cars, but you do whatever you want. I'm going to use cars. What the fuck is this motherfucker doing, man? Like, what the fucking... Fuck, man. And, sorry. Um... Drip offs. Um... If when you get that money, whatever you get, let's just go with, with the with the fourteen hundred, okay? You can do something really nice with someone you care about. Your boyfriend, your husband, your girlfriend, your wife. You know, maybe you get a nice bouquet of flowers, not the thirty dollar wildflowers, but you know, maybe you get like a hundred dollar bouquet, you go out to a nice restaurant where you normally wouldn't go. You're not looking to blow it all, but you wanna do excuse me, you wanna do something nice, okay? And that's where it ends. Nothing for you, only for the other person, if you spend any of that money. Now, if you don't spend any of that money, what I challenge you to do, what I challenge you to do, and I hope you accept this challenge, is take that $1,400 and don't let it burn a hole in your pocket. Find something, find a car, whether it's at the auction, whether it's in the street, whatever. Make it happen for fourteen hundred. We are going to use the twenty percent rule here, people. Okay, the twenty percent rule. The twenty percent rule is this: 
you will invest your $1,400 in profit no less than 20%. For those of you that aren't good with math or don't see where we're going, five flips at 20% minimum, minimum, meaning the absolute lowest, because you can always make more, but on the minimum, after five flips, you have now doubled your $1,400 stimulus check. So you now have $2,800, and that's the bare minimum, because you should be making more than 20% per car. But again, I like to go minimums, so if we get more, we're happy. I don't like to, to go for higher and get less and be unhappy. There's a, there's, there's a word for that, there's a term for that. I don't remember it. I'm driving to work, trying to watch these jerk offs drive here. So, while well, I'm shooting the video. Anyway, <laughs> who's the real jerk off, right? Anyway, $1,400. You find yourself a little 2001, 2002 Honda Accord, under 150,000 miles. Needs a good cleaning, needs a good buffing. They're asking 15 for it. You go up to them, you offer them $1,200. Let's just say you get it at $1,200. You still have $200 out of your 14 sitting pretty. You don't spend it unless you're spending it to rehab the vehicle. You get yourself a polisher, you learn how to polish, you make it nice and pretty, you put it out there, and let's just say you only make 20%. On $1,400, 20% is 280. Your next flip, now you can buy a car for $1,680. 20% of $1,680, okay, is 320. Subtract the 80, you know, whatever that is. So that's gonna be $16. So you guys can do the math and work with whole numbers here. Um, and now you just broke the, the, the $2,000 mark. You are well on your way to doing something with that money other than using it just for liability. If you don't know the difference between liability and assets, assets are what help you build money, okay? Normally, your vehicle is considered a liability. A liability costs you money. So the second you buy a vehicle, not thinking about selling it, because I'm gonna show you something. You go to the car dealership, you buy that brand new car, it's a liability because it's depreciating, right? You didn't buy it, you did not buy it with the intention of selling it to make money. Therefore, it's a liability. The house you live in is a liability. Well, Dave, how can I change my liabilities? I love this truck, it's like a, like a 68 or some shit. Um, how can I change my liabilities to assets? Well, for cars, become a car dealer. You could still buy any cars you want. You're just buying them with the intention to sell them. So it might take you a little while longer to get to that brand new cars that you like, right? But you work up to it. And once you get there, now all those cars that you're buying, those 2016, 17s, and 18s, because you're obviously not buying 2021, because why would you compete with a franchise dealer? You're able to drive a nice vehicle, and sell it the next day and make money and buy another one. And you continue to do this. So that's how you take your, your cars and make them assets. Your house, how can you make your house an asset? This is difficult because you always need a place to live. But if you're living in a house that you're rehabbing to potentially flip or rent, that is how you can do it. That's how you can turn your that liability into an asset and you continue to do it. That one's a little bit more difficult because you're constantly moving around. It's easy as a, sing as a single person. If your partner is down to live that type of life with you where you're constantly moving around and making money, then you, hit, you, you got it made. Now, when you start getting kids in the mix, it makes it a little bit more difficult because you don't want it, in my opinion, you don't necessarily want to keep taking your children out of schools and making them go to new schools. It's not really good for their you know, the way they're gonna learn, the making friends, this, that, the next thing. It's excellent for exposure to other people though. It's excellent for them to overcome shyness and stuff like that. You guys figure it out from there. The moral of this story is your fifteen, your $1,400 stimmy 
That's the bare minimum, right? If you qualify, that's your bare minimum. Because other people that don't qualify don't care anyway because they were just going to save their money. I, you know, right now my money is in a savings account because I just got it and that's where it hit, so it's there. But I have every intention of putting it in the street and making more money with it. The, the point of the story is don't blow it. Don't look at it like it's free money. Look at it like it's earned income. Now take that money and do something with it. Take that money, invest it. And even if you only make 20% ROI, return of investment, you're in five flips of whatever it is you're doing, you will have doubled your money. Using that same formula on $2,800, you can double that to 5,600. That same formula on 5,600 now becomes 11.2, all right? That formula right there works for any single dollar amount. Never take less than 20%, and I think that's low. I think I'm being super conservative with 20%. Make it happen, because right now, you were just given investment money. You were not given Jordan money. You were not given new car money. You were not given go out go out with your boys to the strip club. You were not given any go out with your ladies to, to wine and cheese or whatever the fuck it is ladies do. I don't know. You were given an opportunity here to start a business. You're using their money to make yourself money. If you don't take advantage of that opportunity, you should look yourself in the mirror and be like, yo, you know what, I'm not built for this. The excuse, oh, it's only $1,400. Let me tell you this. If you had a million dollars and subtracted $1,400 from it, you don't have a million dollars anymore, okay? It's $1,400. It's a stepping stone to get you to where you need to be. Too many people get focused on the big picture. Yes, the big picture needs to be the long-term goal. We're talking about immediate goals. We're working with 14 right now. Let's flip that money. If any one of you guys is watching this video and you take my advice, God bless you. God bless all you, truly. But seriously, take this advice. Make it happen. Don't worry about what the next person's looking at. Don't worry about what they're doing. You know, when, when you see someone coming outside and, and you know, they got an apartment, they, they got a, a beautiful car with payments, and they got all this really nice stuff, but none of it is theirs because they own it, understand that in the back of your mind, you're like, yo, you know what? I'm going to have more than that, but I'm going to be able to afford it. Just because you have something doesn't mean you can afford it. All right? This... This country, and I don't know about any other country, but this country is built on credit. So it's built to keep us working and giving our money away, right? Look at the minimum payment on your credit card. That minimum payment on your credit card, if you're going to work like I am, and let's just say your minimum payment is $120, and you make $30, $30 an hour, okay? That minimum payment of $120, is four hours, okay? Four hours of of 160 60 hours that you work per week, per month. Four of those hours are now theirs. Your your rent or your mortgage is, is I don't know, 1,600, right? So 30 divided into 16 X amount of times, multiply that by the hours, that's how many hours your house costs you, all right? Everything costs. When you break it down to hours and money, you'll start looking at shit a lot different. Believe me when I tell you. Moral of the story, don't waste this opportunity that you were just given. Don't. And I'm telling you right now, you're gonna talk yourself right out of it. You're gonna say, oh, but I need this. Oh, I need that. Let me tell you something. If you haven't had it for a while and you've been getting, getting by without it, then you don't need it. It's something that you would like but you don't need it, okay? You can get by without it for another month or two 
while you take that $1,400 and double it. Now, once it's doubled, at that point, if you really need something, you can then take the $1,400, the initial money, your investment money, pull it out and spend it however you were gonna spend it. Hopefully, you're not gonna spend it on some stupid shit. And now you're still left with 1400 that you could replay the first, first portion, right? Boom, 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 five flips, and now you're back up to 2800 But this time, you don't take the money out. You don't take the money out. And I challenge you, here's a one-year challenge. Whether or not you leave the $1,400 in, the challenge remains the same. If you take it out, start the challenge on flip number two. If you don't, take it right away. Don't touch that money for a year. Because you, you didn't have this 1400 The last time we got a stimmy check was what? eight months ago or some shit like that so for eight months you've been making it happen make it happen learn discipline right now for one year invest money invest money i love it i'm, I'm driving by this parking lot and this parking lot it's ten dollars to park on campus where i'm where i work and you got these really nice lower end cars and they don't have ten dollars to park in a garage anyway goals man Goals, mentalities. Anyway, don't spend any of your business investment money for one year. For one year. And see what you come up with. See with what, what happens at the end of the year. At the end of the year, you're going to pay some taxes. Right? Depending on your write off so on and so forth. Paying taxes isn't a bad thing. We're going to get into that. Paying taxes is not a bad thing. And we are going to get into that in another video. All right? But in one year, see what you flipped up to. The flipper rubber flip. Right? See what you see what you got into. Cause shit, could you imagine? Could you imagine? If you started with fourteen hundred dollars and I, I, I can't do the math on this, but you started with fourteen hundred dollars and you only made twenty percent, but you did five flips a month and you didn't touch a dollar of it, think about what that would become at the end of uh, the year. And it, it should just double up, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. So 14 would come 28. That's month one. Going into month one, you got 28. So month two would be 56. Going into month three, you, you started with 56. You're ending month three with 11.2. Then you're going into month four with 11.2. You're going to end month four, go into month five with 20, 11, what was that? 20, 22, four, and just keep doing the math, right? And that's working on five flips at 20% each. Now, it doesn't have to be five flips because what happens if you if you do a flip for, and you get 50%, right? Why don't you put $5,000 in the street and you sell that car for 7,500? That's 50%. You just really upped your game, right? But in the beginning of the month, you know how much money you have and you know you want to double that by the end of the month. Now, the more money you make, the harder it becomes. I'm not going to front. You know, it's it's a lot easier to to flip um, to double up a thousand than it is to double up a million. You know, people do it. People do it, but chances are they're not doing it on, on like one flip. You know, like real business people that aren't tied down to one industry they're just a business individual business minded they make shit happen they don't care and again i'm gonna make a whole nother video about that man i ramble like a motherfucker listen to me take that fucking money put it somewhere and make money with it do not put it into stupid shit do yourself a favor do your family a favor invest that money make some money all right I don't know enough about stocks. I'm not that smart. But if you could tell me that you could make 20% on a stock in, in X amount of time, then do it and continue to do it. As a matter of fact, if you could do it, hit me up. Hit me up. Because my guy's only giving me like 16% right now. And it fluctuates. So anyway, let me know where you're at with it, guys. Please take my advice and turn all these motherfuckers that are making money off of us they are making money off of what I consider us to be low-income, undereducated when it comes to money, motherfuckers. 
They are banking on our stupidity when it comes to money. If that doesn't get you mad, what the fuck will? When this person said that shit, blatantly said it. Oh, this is this is gonna get sold to the guy who's gonna spend his stimmy check on Jordans. Ho 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 Fuck you, motherfucker. Fuck you. You're the reason why I just made this video. And I hope to God, I pray, that some of my people watching this video take heed to what I'm saying and change your fucking goals, man. Stop letting people like this make money off of us. We need to make our own money. We need to be the ones selling cars. We need the ones to be buying businesses. We need that. So this way we can educate our people about money and the importance of watching it grow. We can get off the system. We can be self-sufficient. Nobody can own us. No one can own you when you make your own money. Understand the power of money. Yo, I gotta go. I'm sorry. I got a little bit carried away there. My bad, my bad. Hey, man. Hit the subscribe button. Show some support. It's your boy, Dave Moe. I'm out. That's my best friend.